Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this two-part video, you should be able to determine the oxidation numbers of elements in a compound. Now some students do find oxidation numbers tricky at first, but I promise you it's easier than it looks, so stick with it. I'll be showing you the rules for working with oxidation numbers, and it's really important that you learn them. Now I should point out that if you're following the AQA spec, then oxidation numbers are called oxidation states but I'll be referring to them as oxidation numbers throughout this video. In the last few videos, we've been looking at redox reactions. We've seen that in redox reactions, electrons are transferred from one chemical to another. Now, one really important idea in redox reactions is oxidation numbers. Oxidation numbers tell us about how electrons are lost or gained in a reaction. I'm showing you an example here. This shows the compound magnesium oxide. Now, when magnesium oxide forms, two electrons are transferred from the magnesium atom to the oxygen atom. This means that magnesium oxide contains the magnesium ion Mg2+, and the oxide ion O2-. Now, because the magnesium atom lost two electrons to form the magnesium ion, the magnesium has the oxidation number plus two in the magnesium ion. The oxygen atom gained two electrons to form the oxide ion. So the oxygen has the oxidation number minus two in the oxide ion. Now this can seem confusing, but you need to remember that electrons have a negative charge. So if an atom has lost electrons, then it will have a positive oxidation number. And if an atom has gained electrons, then it will have a negative oxidation number. And you need to remember that when you're writing oxidation numbers, the sign is written before the number. We're going to look now at the rules for assigning oxidation numbers, and I'd strongly recommend that you learn all these rules. OK, in a pure element, the atoms have an oxidation number of zero. I'm showing you a range of elements here, and in each case, the atoms have an oxidation number of zero. Now, when elements have chemically reacted with other elements, then their oxidation numbers will no longer be zero. I'm showing you here the oxidation numbers of the non-metals when they've reacted with other elements. When reacted, fluorine always has an oxidation number of minus one. This is because fluorine is the most electronegative element, so no other element can remove an electron from fluorine. When reacted, oxygen usually has an oxidation number of minus two. However, there are two exceptions which you need to know. Oxygen has an oxidation number of minus one in peroxides, such as hydrogen peroxide. And when reacted with fluorine, oxygen has an oxidation number of plus two. That's because fluorine is electronegative enough to remove electrons from oxygen. When reacted, the halogens chlorine, bromine, and iodine usually have an oxidation number of minus one. However, they can have a positive oxidation number if they react with fluorine or oxygen. And finally, when reacted, hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus one. There is one exception to this, though. In metal hydrides, such as lithium hydride, hydrogen has an oxidation number of minus one. OK, I'm showing you here the oxidation numbers of metals when they've reacted with other elements. As you can see, when group one metals react, they always have an oxidation number of plus one. And when group two metals react, they always have an oxidation number of plus two. When aluminium reacts, it has an oxidation number of plus three. Now, in the case of transition metals, their oxidation numbers can vary depending on the compound. So in the case of transition metals, we need to calculate the oxidation number by looking at the oxidation numbers of other elements present in the compound. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video. 